welcome to today's DIY photo stickers tutorial. I am super excited to share this with you, uh, but first of all, let me show you how the tutorial came to be because I think that is always a fun little journey into someone's uh, thought process. Um, basically, I wanted to actually share a tutorial about the Japanese photo stickers known as Purikura or uh, short for print club, or if, if you're Japanese, you might know it as uh, Printo Club. <laughs> um, basically, these are Japanese photo booths that you can get together with friends or if you're like me, you could just go shopping and accidentally end up in one by yourself. Uh, but you go with friends, you uh, get dolled up, you can, uh, they're all around Japan, you put in like 400 yen, you uh, take the photos in there, do all of your kawaii poses, and then you come outside and go into one of the uh, rakugaki corners, which is kind of graffiti corner, and you put all of these little decorations and stuff all over the photos, it prints out, and it's basically just a sticker sheet of these decorated photos, and then you kind of cut them up, you give them to your friends, you put them in your little collection book, they put them in their little collection book, it's kind of just a memento that you you have if, uh, if I don't know, you're just hanging out with friends. I don't know, I loved it, it was just kind of a way for me to commemorate going to the store, or... <laughs> um, um, one time, I think this is the story I always tell, but I went in to go and buy groceries, I needed to buy bread, I came out with shoes, and I went and did sticky pics. Um, so that's basically my truth. The love for it has a deep-rooted um, history with me. It's actually, back in high school, I had a Japanese pen pal, and that's where I first saw the Purikura, and I was ob obsessed, like could not be more obsessed with anything in my whole life. She had beautiful little handwriting, she had little uh, little anime drawings all over it, and she had these um, photo stickers that were just decorated like crazy, it just looked like my mind in a sticker, <laughs> and in a little photo, and it was all of her friends, and she was kind of explaining who her friends were, and either way, I fell in love then, and uh, and always wanted to do it, I, in, through high school, <laughs> during, uh, or through high school, I, there was actually in Sydney, there was a whole little arcade in the Capitol building in Sydney, um, I think it's still there, but there were about 15 or 16 dollars ago, you could go into these um, photo booths and do the, the Japanese sticky pics, so I would save up my money, and all my friends would go, and we would do these sticky pics, we'd trade them with each other, and so many people didn't want to put all the decorations on there, but I, if you were in the booth with me, it was going to be covered in decorations. Um, we did them in Japan last year. If you saw the Japan vlog when Steve and I went for a holiday, you'll have seen sticky pics in there. I've shown them all through my journals, but um, I'm sure there's footage playing. I'm actually trying a new style of tutorial today where I'm doing face to face. I'm going to do some cutaways. <laughs> we'll see if this lasts. I'm thinking maybe not, but <laughs> we'll try it for today. So. We did that in Japan last year. It's one of my like all-time favorite things to do. I could honestly be given three hours in Sticky Pick Land and still feel like it's not enough. Um, but in my mind, I never thought that there would be a reason for me to need photo stickers that didn't have all of this graffiti on them, that didn't have all of the kawaii little stickers and stuff. So I, um, you know, during my journaling and exploration through mixed media and arts and crafts and uh, all this journaling specifically, kind of photo documenting and, uh, you know, writing out feelings and all this um, exploration phase that I've been going on, I, I pick up so many different things from so many different people. And I noticed so many people were uh, kind of making this hybrid scrapbook journal where they were putting photos of their life in there. And I thought this could be an application for for me. Like I could try this. I could. I do love photos. My husband's a photographer. He's a great photographer. We like to collaborate on photo projects. But if I'm honest, it's a, quite a cumbersome process to have to you know collage them yourself and edit them yourself and get photo paper. Photo paper can be super expensive, then you've got to get the right type of glues that don't eat away, like they're, they're acid free, and it just seemed so much, and you know what I'm like, I'll cut corners. So I, uh, I kind of just left it, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to make a pretty good art tutorial, just because I wanted an excuse to go and be in a pretty good booth for four hours. <laughs> I was going to tell Steve, like, it'd be great journal uh, footage for my video. Uh, but instead of that, I thought, well, if I could figure out how to make photo stickers, strip away the Japanese element, just have it be photo stickers, because um, as I was doing the testing, I realized that once they were on a sticker, and uh, once I kind of figured out how to streamline the process from my iPhone straight to printer, I was using them everywhere. Like, they were end up in my planner, they were all over the house, I tried to stick them on the computer, tried to stick them on the back of my phone, like, everywhere I was putting these photo stickers, so I thought, amazing, tutorial has to happen, let's go for it. Um, so, this is the tutorial today, and I feel like we should just kind of get into it. Um, I want to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Everything I use today is just what I've tried. I'm just gonna say use what you have. If it doesn't work for you, maybe try and find an alternative. There are always workarounds for a lot of things. Um, if you're looking to upgrade, just because I recommend this printer doesn't mean it's gonna be great for you, but um, everything that I've 
will mention, you know, I've kind of vetted, I really love for myself, and I wouldn't recommend anything to you that I didn't love for myself or just enjoy. So having said all of that, I'll link everything down below if I feel like you need to uh, check it out or if you want a specific link to something. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need, I guess, is a home printer. Oh, and before I uh, get through that too, I should just say, this was also because I wanted a cheaper way to uh, make HP sprocket prints. Let's be real, it's very expensive to fill an HP sprocket. Um, I don't have the Canon Selfie, uh, but I did have the Instax Share. I still have that. I just didn't love that every photo I was printing was a Polaroid. Um, all of these instant printers are fantastic for journaling on the go, for travel journaling, uh, for, you know, being outside of your home and needing to have these photos. I think they're great but let's be real, they're so expensive. So um, this was also a tutorial that I thought might address the need for people on a budget or for people that didn't specifically need the, the portability of this project. Um, you know, the, the HP Sprocket obviously is great and I bought it specifically for when we went to Japan because I loved that I could journal as I went. Um, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. The interface is kind of easy to use. Uh, you, you know, you set it up on your, your smartphone and it kind of communicates with that. It's great. But the zinc paper, the zero ink paper, like a lot of the papers, the specialty papers you have to purchase for the travel printers, um, is very expensive. And I've noticed with the zinc, things have gotten a little bit better with the uh, software on the HP, but it doesn't have a great color range. Um, and I love to live in color. <laughs> so for me printing off all of those photos, it was kind of a tricky blend of, uh, of editing to try and get the colors to pop and be um, all that I wanted them to be. So that was my slight criticism about the HP Sprocket, but everything else was great, just expensive. Um, so I think this project kind of addresses that. If you're at home and you don't need the portability of it, these photo stickers are going to save you a ton of money, plus probably add better quality, um, it, depending on, on your printer, of course, and which label paper you end up going with, or photo sticker paper, it's label paper. <laughs> um, the quality is a lot better, actually. And one more thing, I'm using 4x6s today because my printer can handle that, but 4x6s, I don't think I ever really would need, you know, an A4 or a US letter size sheet of photos. If I did, I wouldn't cut the paper up, I would just do it on that. Um, but my app that I use on my smartphone also formats for a 4x6, I think it does a 5x7 as well well so technically you could do that but I like that with the sheets of uh, paper I can actually get three four by six sheets out of one so for me the price breakdown works out great if it's smaller I'm more likely to get it all used and all straight into my journal I can always do another one if I need more but knowing me if I had an A4 sheet of paper of photos I would use about this much of them and the rest would just kind of wait for months to be used at which point I would have had new photos and wouldn't feel like using that. So um, I know some people are going to look at me, chop the paper up and think, oh, that little bit over there is a little bit wasteful. Please do what you need to do. But for all intents and purposes, I'm using four by six today. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get into it. The first thing you're obviously going to need is a home printer. I have the Canon MX922. It is an amazing printer. I'm not sponsored to say any of this. I had this printer back in Australia. I purchased it again when I moved to the States. If you can get it around, uh, what's that called? Black Friday sales, the Thanksgiving sales that everyone has. I think you can pick it up for about 60 bucks, no lie. Uh, the best part about it is that the ink cartridges are separate, so when you have to refill you don't have to buy a whole new tank, which is more economical, uh, as well as the fact that it is a photocopier, a scanner, and a fax. I don't need the fax, I don't think anyone needs the fax, uh, but the scanner is great for me and uh, all the uh, digitizing that I do with my art, and it has a really good uh, resolution as well. And the uh, Photocopier, which is great. I love a good photocopy project. You've seen the copy and collage project. <laughs> I love a photocopier. So uh, that's the Canon MX922. That's the printer I use. Great printer. You're gonna need the paper as well. I've got two different versions today and I'll do a bit of a price breakdown. Um, to be honest, there's not a huge difference in quality of these two. I waited a while to do the tutorial because I was waiting for the Japanese paper to turn up. It is slightly better, I'm not going to lie, the Japanese paper does perform a little bit better, but neither I have a problem with. So uh, I've got two types of paper that we're going to use, a paper trimmer or scissors, you could use either. I'm going to use a paper trimmer because it's a cleaner cut, and uh, obviously some photos, whatever you want to print. It could be photos of your cat, which is what I would more than likely print. Um, it could be photos of me, just take a screenshot. 
<laughs> and uh, it could be anything. I mean, anything you want to print. I use a smartphone as well. If you want to do your collage on the computer, I don't see why that would be a problem. Whatever way uh, you do to print, I my phone can send my picture straight to the printer uh, because they, it, the Canon MX922 has like a Bluetooth, like an air, air print capability, I feel like it's called. Um, so for me, I actually just make my collage on my app, send it straight to the printer and it's done. Amazing. So um, that's how I streamline the process. You might have to fiddle a bit and see what works for you. And like I said, just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. If you have a better workaround or you have a solution to a problem that you came up with, please, please, please leave it in the comments below because there will be more than likely one person that has the same question. So um, if you can deal with that, I myself do Apple, um, Mac. I have no idea how Windows works. <laughs> Haven't used Windows since I left school. So um, yeah, that would be great if, uh, if you find workarounds and different solutions. Please, please, please share them. First thing we're going to do is cut up the paper. Let me talk about the two different ones I have. Onlinelabels.com, I have a uh, white gloss label paper. I'm calling it photo sticker paper, but let's be real, it's white gloss photo paper. Then I've got another one which is A1 Japan um, white gloss label paper. So both of them white gloss label papers. Uh, the Japanese one is slightly better. It took a longer time to get here. I think it took about three weeks. The online label one took about a week, I want to say, maybe even five days. Um, but the price breakdown, let's just go for this because I think this might be what some people are interested in. My HB Sprocket, now you got to remember this is a two by three photo so if you want a 4x6 you'd need two of them. Um, I've done a whole HB Sprocket mini print tutorial if you want to go and check that out because I'm not saying that the HB Sprocket's bad I'm just saying it's a little expensive. <laughs> um, so if you want to get a 4x6 basically the HB Sprocket um, I go to Best Buy I can get 20 sheets of the zinc paper for $9.99 which actually works out to be 50 cents per sheet. Now that's a 2x3 sheet since I'm using 4x6 today let's just double it and say that's 4x6 um, that's a dollar. So if you want a 4x6 photo sticker sheet with HP Sprocket, you're going to spend a dollar. Yeah, not terrible, but definitely adds up over time. Uh, if you want to do the online labels version, that's going to be 88 cents per sheet. I've obviously rounded just uh, to the nearest cent there, uh, but 88 cents per sheet. You can get four, uh, sorry, you can get three 4x6 photo sheets out of the one sheet. So, uh, divide the 88 cents by 3, you've got 29 cents, obviously rounded again. Um, so that's 29 cents as opposed to the, f the $1 that you're going to spend doing the sprocket. Now the A1 Japanese photo paper, this label paper is actually 56 cents per sheet. Um, and that's going to cost you 19 cents for the 4x6 photo paper. So I think that is a humongous difference and that is the reason why I'm so excited to bring this to you because I know there are a lot of people out there that just can't justify these portable printers or maybe just don't need them. They don't need to, you know, journal from outside of the home. I will still keep my HP Sprocket for, you know, traveling on the go, but if I want to print photos at home, I'm doing this from now on. <laughs> um, so you're going to get your paper. I'm going to show you uh, how I cut it. Basically, uh, you can get three of the 4x6 sheets uh, from this paper. I'm going to first of all cut it six inches down the length. Then I'm going to take that sheet and cut four inches and four inches again. So then I'll get two 4x6 sheets there. I'm going to take the leftover sheet and I'm going to cut that four inches wide and then six inches down the length. And there you have three of the four by six sheets. It's as simple as that. And once it's cut, I'll put a little diagram on the screen so you can see it. Uh, once it's cut up, you're going to want to put that paper and load it into your printer. Please, please check if your printer can take four by six. Not every printer can. Some printer can uh, take four by six. Some printers can do five by seven even. The Canon MX922 can do five by seven, eight by 10. It can't do anything bigger than an A4 sheet. So um, you wouldn't want to be going any bigger than that, but every printer is different. So uh, once you've figured out what they, what it can do, load your paper and, uh, and then you're going to want to get your photos ready. So I use my smartphone and I've got the app on my smartphone that I use is called Pick Stitch. I think I explained this exact uh, process in the HP Sprocket 
mini print tutorial, but I'll go through it again here. I'm going to use this app because there's a feature on it where I can actually change the size perspective of the collage. A lot of apps you get will only let you collage in a square because they were typically made for Instagram. Steve actually suggested that I use PicStitch um, because you can change it to four by six. So you can use that. And there's a ton of different uh, collage options that you can use to stitch all the photos together. Some are really quirky and really fun and really zany. I typically just use the ones that's gonna get me whatever amount of photo I need onto the sheet. So I'll change the uh, aspect ratio to four by six. I will then put my photos in there, whatever I wanna print, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. You could leave it like that. Now, not every time I print do I want the little white border. So there's a little bit of a, a trick. You don't have to do any in-app purchases with this, with this app. You can just watch an ad and it will let you use the feature if you watch it the whole way through. So if I want to turn off the little white borders between my pictures, I feel like I hope no one's going to see this and they're going to change this. <laughs> um, but I can just watch the ad the whole way through and then I'll have the uh, capability to reduce the width of that border. So sometimes I'll do that, sometimes I want the white borders, um, sometimes I don't, it just depends on what I'm feeling, uh, but I will do that. I'll watch the ad instead of purchasing it, <laughs> which you know, at this point I probably should have just purchased it. <laughs> Next thing you're gonna wanna do is actually save that photo to wherever you need to save it to to print. Now, I can air print from my phone, so I'm just gonna save it to my camera roll and print from there. If you need to save it to your computer, whatever you need to do to do that, I'm sure it'll be uh, figure outable. You can uh, email it to yourself, you can message it to yourself. I know if you're working on Mac, uh, you can, I guess those are your other options. AirDrop as well, I think. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do it straight from my, my phone. I'm gonna go into my camera roll and then just send it off to the printer to print. Once you've done that, you are finished, actually. <laughs> there is no further step. You've just done your collage, you've sent it to the printer, and it's ready. You can just cut those up, or you can stick the whole sheet in as it is. Um, I just, I think it is a really, really great project for anyone that wants to get more involved with photos in their journals, because uh, you don't have to deal with any glue, you don't have to, you know, get your fingerprints and smudge marks and glue and dirt all over it being, uh, being, being really fussy. You can just cut them up to the size you want and just stick them down. It is as simple as peeling off the backing. Um, like I said before, the Japanese photo paper is a slightly better quality. You have to buy that in a pack of 50, which I think came to $27 uh, US. If you want to buy the online labels, you can buy single sheets, you can even do a test run as well if you need to uh, just try it for yourself because maybe it won't work in your printer I'm not sure but I know on onlinelabels.com I was told that you can just request samples uh, so I will leave the link to the uh, product number down below I'll leave the links to everything down below um, and then yeah you just be creative with it print off as many photos as you want print them as small as you want print them as big as you want um, you're just gonna have so much fun with it I know that I have literally added maybe about a hundred photos to my journal and my planner. I might be exaggerating. <laughs> uh, but I've added so many photos recently since I've been printing on the sticker paper and it has really, really made me excited to keep adding more. I've been saving my Insta stories. If I had a particularly good Insta story, I'll print that out and make that a little feature in my journal as well. Um, just super easy. Now that I can just send it straight from my phone to the printer, I, there's, there's, no, there's no big hassle in, in trying to get it done. So. I really, really love it. It may not be for everyone. I think this will be a great help for anyone that wants to uh, be a bit more economical as far as like using the HP sprocket. Maybe this could be a nice solution for you while you're at home. Uh, but yeah, it's obviously it's going to be up to you and how you like to set up your life and your journaling. Uh, either way, if you found this tutorial helpful, if you enjoyed it, if you used it and it worked for you, if you had some workarounds, please leave those in the comments and uh, please tag me on social media so I can share the love. I'm always looking to learn as well. There might be a better paper out there that is cheaper and easier for me to get and I would love to know about that. <laughs> um, so please keep me in the loop as well and until then uh, have a great time figuring it out and uh, making photo stickers. Bye!